So, um, so let's get started now. The um, objectives. <clears throat> I'm going to have a brief e review of engineering seismology. Okay, don't worry. You don't. There's not going to be a test on P waves and S waves. Uh, but we'll just talk about the background of U.S. seismic design codes because that's changed a little bit in the last couple of years. We'll look at seismic design in general, just a few slides. Basic steps of seismic design using the 2011 MSJC code, and then seismic design of masonry elements using that code. I'll have uh, one extended design example in two parts. The first part will deal with the development of a design spectrum for a structure, and then we'll continue with the design of the principal elements of the seismic force resisting system of that structure. Here's the promised or threatened review of engineering seismology. Let's talk about where our design spectra come from. These are developed by the USGS. They're part of the 2009 NEHRP, National Earthquake Hazard Reduction Program, recommended seismic provisions. These are the, the books that, that when they were published in hard copy, used to have the yellow covers. Okay, now you can just get them online in PDF. Okay. And they're used by our, uh, by the dominant load and uh, general umbrella document uh, for material standards in the U.S. That's ASCE 710. And ASCE 710 is referenced by the 2012 International Building Code. So what I'm going to talk with you a little about, bit about is how ASCE 7 has changed as far as seismic design spectra from the two from the 2005 edition to the 2010. ASCE 705 was familiar territory. We really had two levels of earthquake to, to worry about. The first one was called a maximum considered earthquake. And for the central and eastern United States, where we don't have a lot of experience with earthquakes, this was defined statistically. It was an earthquake that had a 2% probability of exceedance in 50 years. That means that there's a 2% probability that you could get accelerations greater than that earthquake in 50 years. And using a bunch of um, statistics, which any professor would be happy to um, tell you about for a cup of coffee and five dollars or something like that, you could, this is, works out to a 2,500 year return period for the earthquake. So this is the maximum considered earthquake. The design basis earthquake was two-thirds as strong as the maximum considered earthquake, and it had a probability of exceedance of 10 percent in 50 years. The same um, cup of coffee statistics could lead you to the conclusion that this is a 476-year uh, return period for that earthquake. In the western United States, ASCE 705 used, they modified the statistical procedure for our deterministic experience, where we have a lot more earthquakes just recorded. The design basis earthquake would have a 10% probability of exceedance in 50 years, and the maximum considered earthquake was taken as one and a half times the design basis earthquake. We changed this a little bit from ASCE 705 to 710. The changes are not as significant as some of the philosophy behind the changes. The philosophy is, instead of looking at the probability of exceedance of a certain level of acceleration, we want to look at a probability of collapse of a structure. 